So how do we go from a basic image recognition model to a large language model, LLM, like the ones that power ChatGPT? Well, LLMs also use deep neural networks. But working with text is different than working with images, and different neural network architectures are required. Convolutional neural networks and diffusion models are not the best approaches here. Language models use a different set of neural network architectures. We will cover three. The Recurrent Neural Network, or RNN, the Long Short-Term Memory Neural Network, or LSTM, and the Transformer. Why is text different from an image? Let's consider a common use case for LLMs. Generating new text, say by completing a phrase like, I think, therefore, blank. This is like an autofill function that works one word at a time. At each step, the model must determine the most likely word to come next based on patterns learned during training. To do this, the model needs a way to score all possible words and then pick from the top few. This requires the network to have thousands of output neurons, one for each of the most common words in the language. A vocabulary of 40 or 50,000 words might be reflected here. In practice, models don't necessarily select one word at a time, but one fragment at a time. That fragment is called a token and can vary from a single punctuation mark to part of a word to a whole word. The value of each output neuron will be that token's probability of appearing next in the sentence. Interestingly enough, choosing the most probable token every time, for whatever reason, leads to dull output. It turns out a bit of randomness improves things. Most real-world LLMs are configured with a randomness factor called the temperature. More temperature, more randomness. This is why chatbots might come up with different responses when you repeat the same prompt. Once the model has selected the next token, in this case, I, the process repeats. The previous output now needs to become an input to the next step. This is part of what makes text unique. Sequence matters. Each word depends on the ones that came before it. One of the earliest approaches to account for this was the Recurrent Neural Network, or RNN. These models are applied one token at a time, again and again, hence the name Recurrent. To retain the context from the previous steps, RNNs carry a separate set of values that act like an accumulated memory. With each new word generated, the memory values are updated and fed into the next step. However, there are some big challenges to the RNN approach. One is that as the generated sequence gets longer and longer, the memory carried from the early steps will start to fade. Say you ask it to generate a short story. Towards the end, the memory of the opening lines will have faded. It will literally have lost the plot. A second challenge relates to scalability. The RNN works in sequence. One step cannot begin until the previous is fully completed. There is little opportunity to process in parallel, which makes it slower, especially with long sequences. To overcome these limitations, one of the other two types of neural networks can be used. First, let's take up the Long Short-Term Memory, or LSTM, network model. These models are a type of RNN, but with a twist, one that allows them to retain a longer memory. LSTMs carry yet another set of values, including something called the forget gate, which allows the model to assess at each step what information is worth retaining and what should be forgotten. Basically, a more selective, and therefore longer-lasting, memory. However, LSTMs still suffer the scalability problem. They are not highly parallelizable. The third type, the transformer, emerged in 2017 and was a real breakthrough. It solves both the memory and scalability challenges. In fact, transformers are used in nearly all modern LLMs, like Google's Gemini, Anthropic's Claude, and Meta's Llama. Transformer is the T in GPT. In our example, the transformer would input and process all the recently generated text at once, up to a certain number of tokens. This is called the context window and gets fed to the model in bulk at each step. The model, therefore, has a full working memory of the entire recent context before picking the next word. Using a mechanism called attention, the model can then determine which parts of this complete context to emphasize. This transformer approach is more parallelizable. 
Some steps can be processed simultaneously, saving time. Transformers are therefore much better suited for longer sequences of text. They can better remember what they've generated and do it all quickly, in parallel. Of course, parallel processing requires high-powered parallel processors, like NVIDIA's latest GPUs. These chips are why these models can digest and then summarize entire chapters of text in mere seconds. They break down the processing into substeps that can be run on hundreds or thousands of separate chips simultaneously. Conversely, it wouldn't make much sense to throw a non-parallelizable model like an RNN at those cutting-edge GPUs. That'd be like trying to bake a cake faster by buying a second oven. The bottleneck is the process, not the equipment.